In 2013, Boeing made a decision that would define the future of wide-body aviation for decades. The company selected General Electric's GE-9X as the sole power plant for its upcoming 777X aircraft, ending months of speculation about whether Rolls-Royce would secure a share of this lucrative program. This wasn't just another engine deal, but it represented the largest commercial jet engine ever built, and Boeing's choice carried implications worth billions of dollars in future revenue. The Boeing 777X required an engine that could deliver unprecedented performance while meeting strict efficiency targets. Boeing needed a power plant capable of producing over 100,000 pounds of thrust, making it the most powerful commercial jet engine in history. The GE-9X was designed to achieve a bypass ratio of 10 to 1, significantly higher than previous engine generations. This design allows more air to flow around the engine core rather than through it, reducing fuel consumption and noise. GE held a substantial advantage in the selection process. The company already had experience with the GE90 engine family, which powered earlier versions of the Boeing 777. This existing relationship gave GE engineers deep knowledge of Boeing's airframe requirements and integration challenges. Rolls-Royce, by contrast, had never powered a Boeing 777 variant, creating additional technical risk for the program. The development timeline proved critical in Boeing's decision. GE began preliminary work on advanced engine technologies years before the 777X program officially launched. The company invested in ceramic matrix composites, a material that can withstand higher temperatures than traditional metal alloys while weighing less. These composites were incorporated into the GE-9X's high-pressure turbine, allowing the engine to operate more efficiently. Rolls-Royce was developing its ultrafan technology during the same period, but this program remained in the research phase when Boeing needed to make its engine selection. The ultrafan concept featured a geared architecture and advanced materials, but the technology had not yet been tested in a full-scale demonstrator. Boeing faced pressure to launch the 777X quickly to compete with the Airbus A350 and waiting for Rolls-Royce's technology to mature would have delayed the entire program. Boeing also considered the operational implications of its engine choice. Offering a single engine type simplifies maintenance for airlines and reduces training costs. Multiple engine options create complexity in spare parts, inventory and mechanic certification. Airlines that operate both GE-powered and Rolls-Royce-powered aircraft must maintain separate support systems for each manufacturer. The GE-9X features a front fan diameter of 134 inches, larger than the fuselage of a Boeing 737. This massive fan requires only 16 composite fan blades, compared to the 22 blades used in the GE-90. The reduction in blade count came from advances in computational fluid dynamics and material science. Each fan blade is made from carbon fiber composite, offering strength comparable to titanium at a fraction of the weight. GE committed to achieving specific fuel efficiency targets that aligned with Boeing's business case for the 777X. The engine was designed to burn 10% less fuel than the GE9115B, the previous most efficient engine in the GE90 family. This improvement came from the combination of higher bypass ratio, advanced materials, and optimized aerodynamics throughout the engine. The competitive landscape between GE and Rolls-Royce extends beyond individual engine programs. GE Aerospace and Rolls-Royce represent different engineering philosophies shaped by their respective markets and histories. According to industry analysis, GE engines typically emphasize high thrust and power output, reflecting demand from North American carriers for performance-focused designs. Rolls-Royce engines have traditionally prioritized fuel efficiency and lower operating costs, appealing to long-haul international operators. The financial stakes of the 777X engine selection were substantial. 
Each 777X requires two engines and Boeing has secured orders for over 400 aircraft. This translates to more than 800 engines, with additional demand from spare parts and replacements over the aircraft's operational life. Engine manufacturers typically earn more revenue from aftermarket support than from initial engine sales, making exclusive supplier status on a major aircraft program highly valuable. Boeing's decision also reflected confidence in GE's manufacturing capacity and supply chain management. Producing the GE-9X at scale required coordination across multiple facilities and hundreds of suppliers. GE operates manufacturing plants in the United States and Europe, giving the company flexibility to manage production volume and respond to delivery schedule changes. The GE-9X entered service in 2020 when the first Boeing 777 aircraft began flight testing. The engine has accumulated thousands of flight hours across multiple test aircraft. Boeing continues to work towards certification of the 777X with entry into commercial service expected in the coming years. Boeing's chief financial officer just announced something that sent the company's stock soaring double digits. After years of cash burn and production chaos, the aerospace giant is laying out a concrete recovery timeline and it all hinges on 2026. The 787 Dreamliner. Their plan is to dramatically accelerate deliveries of its most profitable jets while fixing the manufacturing chaos that has plagued the company since 2019. CFO Jay Malave stood at a UBS conference and made a statement that immediately moved markets. When you now fast forward to 2026, we're going to be increasing our deliveries, Malave said. Boeing stock jumped between 7-10% to in early trading on the announcement. The recovery is no longer theoretical. Boeing has now published specific numbers and timelines that investors can measure against actual results. The foundation of this comeback rests on two aircraft platforms, the 737 MAX and the 787 Dreamliner. These are not new programs. Both have been in production for years, but demand remains strong. For 2025, Boeing targeted 440 to 450 deliveries of the 737 MAX, with approximately 50 of those aircraft being pulled from a massive inventory backlog. This backlog exists because production has not kept pace with deliveries due to certification delays, supply chain disruptions and geopolitical tensions. Come 2026, the situation changes fundamentally. Malave stated that deliveries will grow in spite of the fact that we have less aircraft coming out of inventory to be delivered in 2026. This matters because it proves production is finally catching up with demand rather than relying on finished inventory. The company will deliver aircraft directly from the production line rather than depleting stockpiles. This signals genuine operational improvement, not accounting adjustments. The 737 MAX production rate increase tells the critical story. In January 2024, a door plug blowout on an Alaska Airlines 737, MAX 9 triggered a Federal Aviation Administration production cap at 38 aircraft per month. For months, Boeing worked on improving corporate culture and embracing lean manufacturing practices. In October, the FAA cleared Boeing to raise monthly production from 38 aircraft to 42 aircraft per month. This increase represented a significant regulatory milestone. Malave confirmed this work is going according to plan. However, he acknowledged timing constraints. It takes months to move a production cadence change into actual output. November 2025 deliveries were described as a bit light due partly to the shorter month. He stated, it'll take us a few months to turn this into output and I would expect that to occur starting probably in the first quarter of next year. The production system needs stabilization before accelerating further. The goal is aggressive. Boeing aims to reach 53 737 MAX aircraft per month by the end of 2026. This represents a 26% increase from the current 42 aircraft rate. Malave explained that once production stabilizes at a new rate, the team begins planning for the next rate increase. This cadence has been Boeing's approach historically though he noted actual stabilization takes longer than theory predicts. 
the 787 Dreamliner program follows a parallel trajectory. Boeing intends to increase production from seven aircraft per month to eight. Like the 737, Malave acknowledged this rate increase will require months to materialize into actual deliveries. He expects output increases to occur sometime during 2026 with the same stabilization period needed before planning subsequent rate breaks. Beyond production rates, Boeing addressed a fundamental problem that has strangled the company, supply chain fragmentation and manufacturing quality. The company is completing its acquisition of Spirit Aerosystems by the end of this year. Spirit manufactures fuselages and structural components for Boeing aircraft. This acquisition is designed to bring a critical supplier in-house, stabilizing a network that has repeatedly failed to keep pace with Boeing's production targets. Malave indicated the company is investing heavily in supplier support, workforce expansion and improved factory processes. These investments aim to prevent future quality issues and production delays. Boeing's manufacturing problems have been well documented since 2019, creating reputation damage that extends beyond financial impacts. The financial projections underscore management confidence in execution. Malave stated the company expects positive free cash flow in the low single-digit billions for 2026. This represents a dramatic reversal from years of negative cash burn. The company projects $2 billion in negative free cash flow for 2025, making the 2026 shift toward positive cash generation particularly significant. Additionally, Malave expressed confidence the company would deliver on its annual $10 billion free cash flow target beyond the near term. One aircraft remains conspicuously absent from the 2026 recovery narrative. The 777X, Boeing's most delayed wide-body program, is not expected to begin deliveries until 2027. Boeing took a $4.9 billion charge in the third quarter tied to the 777X delay. CEO Kelly Ortberg stated the delay resulted from slower FAA authorizations for flight testing rather than technical deficiencies. Malave cited new regulatory requirements as the primary reason for delays. Boeing moved into Phase 3 of the type inspection authorization process last month and has been positioning aircraft for flight testing. The 737 MAX 10, a stretched variant of the narrow body, faces similar timing constraints. Malave expects certification later in the year 2026, meaning early 2027 deliveries are more realistic. This timing gap explains why 2026 recovery will rely almost entirely on standard 737 MAX and 787 aircraft rather than newer variants. Boeing's recent performance provides context for these projections. In the third quarter, Boeing delivered 160 commercial airplanes, its highest total since 2018. The company generated $1.1 billion in operating cash flow, marking positive cash flow for the first time since 2023. Commercial airplane revenue rose 49% to $11.1 billion. Boeing's total backlog reached $636 billion, including more than 5,900 aircraft. The market's response on Tuesday carries significance beyond stock price movement. Boeing articulated specific, measurable targets. Production rates are quantifiable. Delivery volumes can be verified. Cash flow is auditable. The company has moved from crisis communication to operational projection.